Hello, I'm Chuck. I'm Molly. And I'm Chelsea. If you're looking for a video that teaches you how to use a Brunton compass to measure linear and planar structures in rocks, you've come to the right place. All right, let's get started, shall we? So, what we've got in front of us here is a slate with a very well-defined foliation or slaty cleavage here. So what we'd like to do is figure out the orientation of this slaty cleavage. And to do that, we're going to uh, use the Brunton Pocket Transit, standard compass that geologists have used for many, many years. And the first thing I'm going to do is take it out and, in essence, try to make it very much a, a plane that is horizontal and bring it in and put the edge right up against the cleavage surface here. And then I will uh, whirl it around until the bullseye bubble is level and that defines the strike. The strike is 080, which means that it is oriented 80 degrees from north in a clockwise fashion. So that's the first part of what we want to do. The second part involves measuring the dip. And notice here I put the Brunton at right angles to the strike line, which is parallel to my finger. The compass itself is in a vertical plane. And then I more or less use the clonometer until we have the clonometer bubble centered and level. And at that point, we've got the true dip angle measured. In this instance, the true dip angle is 40 degrees. And the last trick here is to figure out, well, what direction is it dipping? Is it dipping to the south or is it dipping to the north? And the compass, once again, can be used. North arrow suggests it is dipping to the south. So this slaty cleavage surface is striking 0, 8, 0, dipping 40 degrees to the south. Well, uh, that's great, Chuck, but what happens when the planes we're trying to measure aren't so conveniently located? Let's say they're, I don't know, cutting through the middle of a rock. How do we measure that, huh? What about with this contact? So what you can do in a situation like this is just extend the plane that you're trying to measure. A field notebook works very well, but for the purposes of this video, I'm going to go ahead and use a clipboard. So you want to make sure that you can see the plane in enough angles to actually orient the clipboard the same way the plane is going. Now your field buddy can come in a lot of handy for this because they can not only make sure that you've got it aligned properly, you don't want to apparent dip, and while you're measuring, it's very nice if they'll hold it for you so it doesn't move. So now that we've extended the plane, we can measure strike and dip, just like we did earlier. So we want to keep this edge flush with the plane, level it, we can mark that as our strike, and now if we draw a line perpendicular to that, we know exactly where we want to measure our dip keeping the bubble side up. We'll just line that up on our new dip line and level the compass. With a bit of practice, you certainly won't need to draw strike and dip lines on the plane that you're measuring, but if it helps you to start with, by all means, go for it. So, I get a strike of 0 to 8, get a dip of 7, 5, and a dip direction northwest. Mm -hmm. Now let's take a look at linear features, like these scolithosporos in this sandstone. The geometry of linear features is described by an azimuth, the trend, and an inclination, the plunge. Examples include striations, slicken lines, and even these linear expressions of trace fossils. So let's measure the trend and plunge of these scolithos. To start, hold the button over the features, be sure to keep it horizontally level. Line up the button using either the side or the sight. Once you've leveled the compass and have it aligned, read the north arrow. This is the trend. Linear features can trend in any one direction, so it's important to record the north arrow. To measure the plunge, align the compass with the feature, but this time orient the compass vertically with the clinometer or vertical level bubble side up. Keep the compass in a vertical plane and tilt the compass to match the plunge of the scolithos. Adjust the vertical level, and you've measured the plunge. Our scolithos burrows are trending 165 degrees and plunging 20 degrees. Well, there you have it, rock stars. We here at William & Mary Geology's Structure and Tectonics Group hope you enjoyed and learned from our Brunton tutorial. And if you have any questions, let us know. All right.
to use it. 